All right, so let me tell you how my Peak Shaver uh, power wall works, right? So it's very small power wall. It's made to run this AC. Here's how it works. Here is a current switch. When this AC here turns on, then it closes the circuit that is on this blue cable. Now that blue cable then goes into this box and triggers these guys. And these are times uh, base uh, little circuits, right? Uh, and when those get triggered, then it activates these relays, which then turns, either decides if it turns the uh, grid tie inverters or the charger. This is a charger here, right? With a DC constant current, constant voltage, two stage uh, setup to charge this battery. Here is the battery, right? And the battery right now, it's fully charged. All right, so 37.62, that's the top voltage of that. Uh, it's charging right now about 11 watts. So it's it's just topping it off. But when this AC goes on right now, it's gonna trigger these two. And then those are gonna turn the inverters. And then that is gonna connect the battery to the grid tie here. Here is the AC going on and off all morning right now at noon when peak rates start then this battery is going to turn on for the first time and i'm controlling this with this one right here and this one is set to run right now at noon for the for six hours right 900 minutes and then it's gonna do uh 18 hours i think off so that even though this might cycle in and on and off at night then it won't be triggering this battery to go on and off right and then tomorrow at noon again this will cycle on right it'll turn on and then when this turns on then it'll trigger these guys to switch and charge you know discharge the batteries through these inverters and shove all the energy over here now the rest of the stuff that you're watching here seeing here it's a thermal control right i had to put some fans in here this fan right here is a high cfm output so it's kind of noisy but who cares once you close this you don't hear it, it just kind of sounds like a like a little hum or whatever. And it, it sucks air through here, which makes it run through the entire units. And then this one also runs uh, when it's charging. So let's see if that, hopefully that's gonna be enough to keep this unit cool. So now we're just waiting for the AC to start. There we go. Okay, so these are triggered now, and the timer started 600 uh, seconds, which is about 10 minutes. As you can see here in the battery, now is sucking 2.2 kilowatt off of that battery, and it's shoving all that energy from that battery into this unit here. And here is the effect that it will have right so here's a normal cycle and here is the cycle where these guys then turn on it took a little while for those to kick on because it was the first time but you see here we go about half of that energy is coming out of the battery Alright, so it just disconnected. Uh, the AC turned off, so now this is disconnected. So now the battery is not being discharged. 349. So now the battery is actually charging a little bit at 350 watts. So it's just putting about 10 amps into the battery until the next cycle happens. Right? And the next cycle happens and the next cycle has to happen between uh before 15 minutes goes by if it happens before if this turns on before 15 minutes then it won't click on because this one has a rest period to let these guys cool because these guys get extremely hot running at peak for 10 minutes 
or for you know for 10 minutes these will run on a maximum of 10 minutes even if this lasts longer than 10 minutes then these will shut off after 10 minutes and then they will rest for 15 minutes to let uh you know to give them time to cool off and then after the 15 minutes on the very next cycle they will run again for 10 minutes and then they will rest for 15 minutes and then again and again right they will do that until it runs out of battery or until this timer uh, reaches six hours and at that point then this will switch off which will prevent this turning on and off to have any effect on this and what that will do is would let this guy charge the battery in its entirety and then wait there fully charged until the next day at noon when this will flip right back into connecting this sensor back into these and then the cycle begins all over again now this system is kind of crude in, in the eyes of some people right there's no uh it's only if something happens then it triggers a bunch of other events uh it's scary for some people that doesn't have smarts that you can right now we, i can't control it remotely right this is just once you you turn it on it's just gonna do its thing but it's got a lot of redundancies right if those batteries if if this time timers uh fail right and this keeps discharging this battery past the safe point then this guy will step in and they'll will disconnect the battery at 31 volts so it will not let these guys kill the battery right now if this system here fails then the bms inside the batteries will then step in and disconnect that battery so there are you know triple redundancies here in order to keep that battery from dying right uh and which means that also they, it won't you know won't catch fire when you start charging it the same thing here if this fails to quit charging at the right voltage then this guy will step in and if that one also fails then the bms inside the batteries will step in and disconnect those batteries so uh other than these shorting out maybe you know their fuse here there is a uh a hundred amp breaker in here so yeah it's it's pretty much this is connected to that same circuit which is also has a breaker outside and it's got a fuse here it's got multiple redundancies this system should run like that you know without needing oh here we go so it just started, the next cycle just started, but of course, it's before 15 minutes of rest. And so what's happening is that these guys did not turn on and is gonna let that battery sit there and the, this is gonna let those guys cool off for a few more minutes. And then once, once that finishes, then, then the very next cycle is gonna come up, this guy's gonna go again. Like every other one of my projects, they are ever evolving and I foresee a lot of tweaking before I get something that I'm happy and that it works reliably in an autonomous way. But one of the aspects of this particular project that I feel comfortable sharing with the world is the battery box design. It is by far the quickest way to assemble two kilowatt hours of storage using these fireproof hoverboard packs from batteryhookups.com. These are 9S, so it makes them a weird voltage of 32 volts not compatible with most or any of the inverters out there except for these solar grid tie types they are super easy to secure inside these watertight enclosures i'm even making the pcb based power strip i designed for my pack so you can easily put one or a few of these together yourself for a peak shaving diy power wall of your own i do plan on making a more detailed step-by-step -step video on how to build one of these and how to set all the settings for the automation and even for some remote control in the future. But that's gonna have to wait as I am currently taking a bit of much needed time off in this beautiful island of Hawaii. If you're watching this and you live in Maui, hit me up in the comments below. I'm hanging out in Mahaina area this week. 
that, I say thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.